Hey, if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. All right, so first let me say that I am petrified of needles. Like that is no joke, all right? I have a tattoo already and it took, it was, it was such a mission to get, all right? Now, having said that, I'm issuing a tattoo challenge. Now, a lot of you might be wondering, what is that? Well, there's a link in the description below. Please go check it out. It's called the Tattoo Challenge. In a nutshell, if you guys can get me to 5,000K subscribers before the 16th of August, I'm gonna get a tattoo chosen by you guys. Yeah, I don't know, I, I, I don't know why I decided to do this. Having said that, enjoy the show. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Let's Talk and tonight is a very special edition. Uh, I have on my right, as you can see, Herman Ross, who is a tobacco farmer and he has been fighting the good fight against, or to lift the ban against the tobacco ban. Um, so he recently reached out to me and said that he has some things to get off his chest. I'm not entirely sure what that means, but it definitely is going to be an update on the tobacco ban as it stands. So. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to get right into it. Um, and by the way, for those of you that have tuned in, thank you guys so much. Please share this link and tell people to tune in uh, and give us some comments, give us some questions. We will address them as soon as uh, Herman is done saying what he needs to say. But this is basically his opportunity now to put some things out there, put some information out there. And we do need your help to spread this news and make people more aware of what is going on. So, Herman... Without further ado, the hi floor Joe, is yours. hi everybody. Thanks and uh, once again for having me on your channel. Last time we talked about uh, travel and uh, how that influences uh, our way of views, and it was quite an interesting chat. But tonight I'm talking about something that's closer to home, and that is the fact that I'm a tobacco farmer. Um, the tobacco ban in South Africa has had tremendous effect um, throughout South Africa, throughout the value chain. Uh, a lot of people don't understand how this is also just not just the ban uh, on the future of tobacco farmers, but also the psychological effect it has on us. And it is by, day by day becoming more difficult. Uh, some morning, uh, some days in the, in, when I wake up, my day, I literally start depressed because I'm not sure how I'm going to survive. How do I have to plan for the season? Uh, when I face my workers in the morning, early in the morning, when I do my uh, whole thing in the morning and, and checking, and you sort of lose their hope for the future. And um, I wish that South Africans and also the government, and especially the president, can understand this. Even my workers are now noticing that I'm becoming, you know, sort of absent. You know, I'm there, I'm checking that they're doing their jobs, uh, but I'm not my whole self. Uh, one of my workers remarked this week and said, um, you know what, boss, you're not here. And I'm like, I'm here. He says, no, your spirit is not here. And I said, why? And he says, usually you'll make jokes with us and or you will start telling us a story while you're working. You will always tell us something interesting or you'll just talk. He says the late and I'm like, OK, he's got he's got a point, you know, but let's get into what the effect is of this tobacco ban. All right. Most people in South Africa think, OK, all right, this is effect of only the cigarette sales, you know, uh, the uh, companies that's hurt in this, in this whole thing. But in the end, let's get down to business and let's get down to some numbers to get this thing going. And so that people can understand what are the amounts of money that will be lost, all right, on a farming level. We've got around 8,000 farm workers working on our farms. That is a roughly around 30 to 40,000 dependents. If you take an average family of four people, all right, mother, father, two children. But in most cases, it is not just the, the, uh, <clears throat> the two children that's dependent on, on the parents. It's sometimes the grand and the grandfather uh, who is now also on a pension. But the meager SASA payout is 1,200, I think, if I can remember correctly, a month. So they cannot live on their own. So the children are looking after them. Right. Now let's look at the numbers. For instance, on my farm, if I have to cut down, 
if I have to start and say, okay, uh, tobacco is out for me, I'm cutting 80% of my stuff, all right? But let's say that's worst case scenario. If we take 8,000 farm workers and we have to cut 50%, 4,000 people will be without a job. And the chances of them finding a job out there on another farm is very slim. It's less than 1%. Because most farms in South Africa already has their temp, temp staff. Uh, most of them have their permanent staff. And they're not recruiting because the market is shrinking. In the vegetable industry, the citrus industry, everywhere the market's slowly shrinking. So nobody's expanding on, on, on um, labor force, right? So these guys, if they do not have a Sasa income, uh, then they're jobless. They're not going to have a job. If you take the, the minimum annual wage per month set by the minister is 3,360 rand per farm, uh, farm worker. All right? That's the minimum. All right. Okay? If you take that and you multiply that by 12. That's 40,000 Rand a year that that one worker is earning. Now on most farms, it's the husband and the wife is working on the farm. All right. Yeah. So take that and times that by two. That's 80,000 Rand a year that that family is earning. All right. Yeah. Remember, on the farm, they have housing. They have, uh, they have the income, all right? And there are other certain circumstances where we'll make sure that they, for instance, if they have to go to the clinic, I will help them. Yeah. And I don't take deductions from their pay for that because for me, that's wrong. A lot of farmers will help their workers in such situations and never deduct that money from their salaries because they feel it is wrong. Right. So in total, if we lose 4,000 farm workers in South Africa in the tobacco industry, that's 1.6 million a year that's taken out of circulation. Now you can say to me, oh, what, what is, what, what is 1.6 million out of the economical circulation? But that's 1.6 million that's supporting spaza shops. It's yeah. supporting uh, small shops in the rural areas. Most of our workers come from areas like um, Majakaneng in our area or Ramakokastat. Some of my workers come from uh, Gyani. And this money is sent back home and this supports a micro economy. Yes. Um, sorry, I just want to quickly see. Guys, I'm still on standby for if there's an emergency. Uh, okay, nothing serious. Um, if there's an emergency, I'm, I'm still on standby. So, guys, I'm going to check my phone if that happens. Okay. So, that micro -econo economy is now left without 1.6 million. All right. That's if half of our labor force is removed. Mm. All right. Now, that is on a farm level. All right. That's a direct impact on our farm workers. Guys, if I show of my hands and everything please excuse me I, i'm not the type of guy that can no, be yourself man still. be yourself um so 1.6 million out of a micro economy that's a direct impact on your small um rural areas all right then if you take the average salary as per south african as business tech um reports it they say that they say that the average industrial, non-agricultural um, person in, in, uh, receives around 21,000 Rand per month salary. Now, Joe, I think at this stage, me and you would love to have that salary, but we can only hope. Um, so if you take the average South African in, uh, taking 21,000 Rand home a year, roughly around 200,000 people are employed throughout the value chain, all right, in, in the tobacco industry, all right, legal, let's say it, legal tobacco industry, yeah. all right. Now, let's multiply, that's per family. Let's say if we take 50,000 people who falls into that income bracket, 
right? There's different income brackets. Let's say 50,000 people falls into and we remove them. All right. Times the 12. Times 50,000. It's 107 million rand taken out of our economy. If I did my mathematics correctly. Yeah. 107 million rand. I think if I'm wrong, please guys do it in the comments. Just make do the math for me again. But it's a phenomenal amount. Now, out of that money comes taxes that's paid to government. Yes. There is a medical insurance that's paid. Uh, there's school fees that needs to be paid. There's a car installment payments. Uh, uh, um, a, a company that sells property companies. There's a lot of eff effects. Mm which we now, how many, and, and my question here is, how many of that 50,000 skilled and educated labor will find a job again? Yeah. In that same income bracket. They might find a job, but it might be at six or 8,000 rand. And this is where the things get scary, mm. all right? As with anything, the domino effect, it starts and it slowly comes down down, down, and it hits the farmer at the end. We are now in such a dire position that if the, the ban on tobacco is not lifted within the next two weeks, actually next week, but the end of the month, by government, our chances of running into production costs because we, we, we're already planning our next season. I'm already putting money into my new season. And I'm not sure how much I'm going to plant. Even if I am going to produce tobacco. And with that comes the scary part. For instance, if our buyer decides and says, okay, guys, listen, I have a surplus stock, which is fair. I cannot expect my buyer to continue to buy my product, but he has a surplus in his, uh, in his storage facilities. And if he says, okay, guys, I'm going to cut you to 50 or 40 or 30% production. Somewhere along that line, somebody's going to fall out of the bus. And unfortunately, it's going to start with the farm workers. All right. Then it's going to move up the chain. And it's slowly build, build up until we get to where it starts now affecting the whole country. Now, now you're going to ask me, how is this affecting the whole country? Let's start with the wine industry, the tobacco industry. Every year, a lot of research is done by the chemical companies and fertilizing, uh, fertilizer companies for us to get the perfect product. All right. Some people think for some reason, they think there's no chemicals used to produce their vegetables or their grapes or their wine. But we need certain chemicals. And as time progresses, um, insects and fungi builds resistance against certain chemicals. It's like antibiotics. If you use too much antibiotics, you, your body and your bacteria and your fungi builds a resistance against it. So these chemical companies need to invest in research and it's costing them millions because they can't just take a molecule and invent a new chemical. There's trials that they need to do. Does it work? Is it working for the intended purpose? What's the environmental impact? What's the carcinogenic impact? Will it cause cancer? And all of those things. Okay, I've used this product, but in combination with a product like tobacco or wine, what's the ca uh, carcinogenic effect? Will it increase it? Will it decrease it? That is the problem. All right. So these guys, now suddenly you're selling less of a chemical product. At a certain stage, it will not be viable for them to import the active, because every product has an active ingredient, either to import that active ingredient or to continue manufacturing it in South Africa. And they will discontinue that product. Right. Where does that leave us as farmers? Now we don't have this chemical product anymore that is helping us producing our crop. It happened in Zimbabwe that it came to such a point that they had to ask now every chemical to explain to the guys. All chemicals are, re are, are registered with the registrar um, uh, and on the Chemical Control Act of 1947. I think if I can remember correctly. Now, it gets an L 
and a number, say L11567, all right? That's a, a reference, all right? It became so bad in Zim that they had to give permission for South Africa to use L registrations. L, now the letter L is for South Africa. Mm -hmm. You will find chemicals under the South African registration in countries like Zimbabwe and Zambia, all right? Because there's no need for a chemical company to continue their research. And as the world is going gung-ho on the use of chemicals on uh, on, pro, uh, on on veg, on on human consumption consumables, let's say human consumables, uh, vegetables, the world is becoming stricter on the type of chemicals we use. All right, you have difference. All right, so the companies need to continue their research into getting products that's balanced for human good. Now, you, I don't know if you can remember DDT. No. All right. If there's anybody in the comments that remembers DDT. Now, DDT was a brilliant um, chemical. It killed mosquitoes and insects. And oh, yes. Now I remember. <laughs> yeah, the famous DDT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, after years, now, I could give you DDT and you can eat it and you won't be affected. Yeah. But the problem is the buildup of DDT in your body led to certain malfunctions and organs, Children were born um, with problems, and later on they realized how dangerous DDT is. Mm -hmm. And DDT is still in use, but only in very, very specific controlled areas where malaria mosquitoes are a big problem, all right? So DDT was a wonder chemical. Then came organophosphates, all right? Mm -hmm. Organophosphates kills insects. It works beautifully. But organophosphates are highly lethal to human beings. All right. Better known as what they call Agent Orange. Agent Orange was used as a defoilant in plantations in Vietnam, but it also contained organophosphates, which led to people being children being born, born deformed. All right. So once again, the world is moving now away from these chemicals that can cause harm to the environment and humans even during the application, all right. So the chemical companies need to continue their research into more what we call nature-friendly uh, products, human-friendly. Now, if a com country's agricultural sector starts declining, they're going to stop that. Right? So there are people who are selling these chemicals. There are people who's working in those labs that's going to lose their jobs. Same as with the fertilizer. All right. Next one that's going to be affected. You, okay, the farmer is buying tractors. If there's less income, there's less sales on tractors. There's less sales on implements. And the same effect with every industry that we are directly connected to, the same will happen as with the chemical industry. All right. Research is done in every facet of, of agriculture. And what people don't realize is that most of South Africans are either directly or indirectly linked to the agricultural sector. Even if you are buying a chicken in the shop, you're not directly linked to it. But from buying that chicken, that frozen solid big chicken, and putting it in your oven, you have just supported a, a vet, because a veterinarian is needed to check that there's no disease break, outbreak of diseases. You have supported a company that specializes in medicine for, for chickens, mm -hmm. uh, research companies. You have not just supported the, a farmer, but you've supported a person in a lab that's uh, researching, a student that's research, researching, sorry, um, um, uh, f uh, food, uh, no, I've, Bacteria, I've lost my viruses. No, no, no. Um, nutrition values nutrition value. of, yeah, the nutrition. So along the line, I'm talking, this is just a chicken. Now you've supported a, a, a guy who does transport from the abattoir to the, hey, now we're talking. How many are people are affected from buying one chicken? Hmm. All right. And here is where the situation lies in the tobacco industry. 
we are already a small industry and we've already been at a constant peril of chemical chemical com companies um, withdrawing their products all right mm. and they've been very most of these chemical companies have been very lenient towards us but if our industry shrinks more at a point it will not be viable for them to continue producing their products right people will be out of without a job there right in the fertilizer side it will not be just a, such a big effect on them but it's still an effect mm -hmm. all right and this is where i'm begging all our viewers tonight please we need government to understand we need the world to understand that is not just me sitting here tonight that's affected it is not Batsa alone that's affected it is not just the lady behind the counter that you buy your cigarettes from that's affected it is all the small people in between that's directly and indirectly connected to our industry that's going to feel the brunt of the situation and if we can send a message out to the world go on to Facebook guys please go on to Instagram go on to telegram go on to TikTok, uh, go on to Twitter and I'm asking everybody in South Africa and not just South Africa all over the world share the message not my message because guys it's not about me I'm the face sitting here tonight doing the begging and the ranting and the raving it's not about me for tomorrow I might not be there anymore but the message is to help not just tobacco farmers not just wine farmers, but all farmers in South Africa. Because what's happening with us, and I'll explain to you guys why, why I'm saying this. The first industry in South Africa that folded was the flower industry. Because when the lockdown hit, suddenly these guys couldn't sell one flower. Yeah. And a lot of the flower farmers have gone bankrupt. I don't think, I think we will stand a chance of losing 80% of flower production in South Africa. Last time I heard from one of my neighbor who, who is actually a flower farmer. He's barely making it. Wow. 80%. Lucky enough, 80% of flower farmers will be lost. That's, that's what they think. All right. Then came the tobacco ban. And we thought, okay, this will be a short-term thing. Then came the, uh, and the alcohol ban. And it's been up and down, up and down, and up and down, and up and down. Um, and in the end, how many, and slowly, these industries will start collapsing. Hmm. Next one, we don't know, it, it might be the chicken industry, it might be the cattle industry, it might be the meat industry, it might be the food industry. We don't know. And this is where the necessity of getting a message out. Guys, it is not just affecting me. This eventually will affect all South Africans. And if you tonight sitting there and you're thinking oh it will not affect me it is like driving into a riot in cape town and thinking your car won't be stoned and set to light yeah, a quick question from from my side yeah i think okay, it's important I've, to I've ranted now. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right so for those of you that are watching uh, thank you guys so much everyone that is watching this any one of you watching thank you so much for tuning in um, please, at this point, you can start dropping in your questions. I have seen some of them, but the, the live chats have been going like crazy, so I can't uh, go back. I'm going to take too much time to go back. So just copy-paste your question. I'll see it, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give it to Herman. But a quick question from my side, and, or, or, or I think more of a statement. For those that don't know you, right, um, you are not some big, massive corporate farming company you're no. you're you maybe maybe exp, maybe tell us that uh you say you're speaking for everyone and i agree with you on that and that's not an issue but i think what people need to understand is you're also not like this big like you don't have a lot of money behind you so you can keep on going no okay to g give you guys a bit of a background who i am i'm now um the fourth generation 
on this farm. Sounds a lot, okay. Um, but how it works on our farm is that every generation takes over from the previous one. But there's no, I'm leaving you my money so that you can uh, start and build a big company. What my dad did is he had to start on his own. His, my, my grandmother didn't give him money. And my dad had the same with me. So I started farming in 2006. It's a family farm. We employ about 40 people on our farm. Uh, I'm farming only 15 hectares. I'm small in the tobacco industry. All right. I'm a very small farmer in the tobacco industry. Mm. So I'm employing max 40 people, uh, planting 15 hectares. All right. And what my father did is my father said, okay, in 2017, he said, okay, you've been farming for more than 10 years. Now it is your turn to take over the responsibilities of this farm. And that means everything, debt, everything. And my dad said to me, here's your harvest, make a success of it. Mm. And from the money that I got from that harvest, I had to grow my business. Mm. I have to grow and continue. All right. So mm. my dad didn't come in and, and say, oh, yeah, by the way, um, here's the farm, here's the property, go and make debt as much as you want. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. You're not getting it. I'm not giving you my property. That's mine. Uh, you'll only get it when I'm not there anymore. Yeah. All right. Within three years, I had to buy my own property. Right. I bought my own, but I bought it uh, for, for grazing. All right. Mm. So yes, I'm not a big farmer. And but it boils down to yes, I'm not a corporate guy. So if I'm affected, I don't have a directors or shares that I can fall back on. Yeah. The only thing I can fall back on is my uh, of, of my heart. <laughs> well, that's a true, it's a true saying. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm going to start looking at some of the comments that are coming through. Let's, let's go for the questions. Um, so uh, Brazos Planet Q says uh, he was talking to someone in the chat, but um, I for sure want to help guys like Herman. How do we get in contact with Herman? Okay, so uh, for those of you who don't know, refresh your page. And you should see in a description or in the description, I have linked uh, a petition, which Herman is going to speak about just now. And I've linked Herman's uh, YouTube channel as well. And all the details of how to contact Herman are on his YouTube channel. Yep. Please go subscribe to him yep. as well. Um, and so that's how you can get in contact with him. Um, then there was a question that Mikhail and Yanni, or sorry, yes, Yanni were um, talking about. Which is um, trying to find Yanni, if you don't mind, uh, because I would like. I know Mikhail's like got a few points, and I'm not saying Mikhail's wrong, but I would like for for Herman to actually. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, so he's asking, is there any way to store or preserve your tobacco product when the ban is lifted? Um, and two, is it worth it? So one, is it possible? Two, is it worth it? All right, let's get boiled down. Okay, so what happened is this season's crop has already been sold. All right, okay. they are. I, I have to comment, uh, BAT South Africa, that they have stuck to their part of the agreement and they've bought out our stock. All right, okay. tobacco can be stored um, if it's done correctly, and that is where L the company LTP and BAT they have the right storage capacity and facilities. All right, because we have a problem called tobacco weevil, um, and it needs to be stored at the right humidity. And if you have a problem or infestation of tobacco weevil, it will destroy your whole crop. All right. So no, for us on the farm, we don't have the money to build these uh, literally uh, you, uh, airtight compartments that we can use phosphoxin of. Um, and it's not worth it because your expenses are going to run away with you. All right. So the problem is you can store one season, but it's costing us around 100 to 120,000 Rand per hectare input cost. For me on my 15 hectares, that's around roughly around 2 million input cost. All right. If I put that money in and I have to store it for a next year, I won't be seeing a next year. All right. I need to generate my money. My income from my grains, my soybeans and wheat is not big enough to continue carrying me through the year. 
um, we have exuberant electro, electri, uh, electricity fees. Um, to give the guys idea, my average electricity bill, and I'm small, is 30 grand a month. These guys running electricity bills in the tobacco industry are for half a million a month. That's to give lot. you guys an idea, that's excluding your water levies that you have to pay. That's excluding your other things that you need to pay. So, no, it's impossible for us. We have to, to literally harvest, cure, get it into uh, storage, from storage into sorting, sorting to the co-op as fast as possible. Mm. Because we are running tight budgets. All right. Right. Most farmers have debt. All right? Because not all the farmers have the privilege of having the capability of doing a cash crop. Right. Yeah. So they go to the bank and they say, okay, I have 40% of the money to put this crop in. I need the other 60. Mm. The banks will loan them the money. All right. But you're paying that 60% back at interest rate. Yeah. All right. So most of the guys will be able to pay off their, their production loan this season. But now with the turbulence that's going on in the industry, my question is, are the banks going to be willing to give these guys production loans? Yes. But what are you putting on the table for me, Mr. Farmer? Mm. Where is your contract? Where's your contractual obligation? So things are getting stricter. Mm. And if that guy cannot meet his contractual obligation, he will not get a, 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 a next production loan again. Does that mean they can take your farm? Yes. And that's the problem. Wow. So you don't pay back the bank, they take your land. Sound familiar, people? EWC, only it belongs to the bank. Yeah. All right. But luck, only to the bank or your neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, there's a question here from Charmaine who says... Uh, I'll order and pay for postage, roll my own as is. Uh, she was asking earlier if it's, is it yeah. possible for people to uh, okay. order directly from you? Okay, guys, to get into the whole thing on how it works, and this is where the difficulty of the situation uh, lies. In the Tobacco Control Act, now, you guys must remember, it's a very strict act. South Africa is one of the best, probably next to Australia. Australia's is the worst, but... We have a brilliant control act. And the reason for that was, and it was for, this was written by Anton Rupert. All right. And the idea was uh, to protect the farmer and the buyer, yeah. if I remember correctly. All right. Once again, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but this was a control act. And the reason for that was, is that the farmer will sell to the buyer. All right. And that will protect the buyer's market. All right. So, I can't, I'm not just going to go off, off to the sideline and do whatever I want, and it influences my buyer's market. But in the same time, the buyer's also looking after me as the farmer. All right, that's the idea. All right, then there's now the smoke, uh, the Tobacco Control Act and other things. Unfortunately, I have a contractual obligation towards our company, LTP, which is the buyer, They've got the, uh, a huge setup that handles the – they the go-between between us farmers and uh, our buyers. All right. So I have a contractual obligation, and that is to protect our market and also our buyer's market. Right. The next thing is – and the guys must be very, very careful when they get to this part. Taking raw leaf from tobacco and selling it to any person, I still need – an invoice stating my income that I have earned from the tobacco. I need to say I sold you five kilograms plus VAT. Mm. All right? That, okay, there's ways and ways. A lot of people get around it. Secondly, and this is the most important, guys. Once you process tobacco from raw leaf into any form outside of that raw leaf, and you sell it off, you need to pay excise duties, hmm. your syntax. And if you are caught selling tobacco products without paying duties on it, they're going to lock you up. You are going to explain to Sarge where, where did that money go. 
Mm. And that is a very, very important thing that people should know. And that's why we as farmers stay out of this game, out of selling directly to the public, because somewhere along the line, somebody's going to get caught. Mm. All right. And this is this is nothing to do with big uh, tobacco or anything. <clears throat> Guys must understand that we've got a very strict controlled industry. And for that reason, it is actually to stop the illicit trade. And at this stage, it's not happening. Yeah, <laughs> what's about to say? That's, um, <laughs> that's the worst part. It's actually supposed to stop it. But if I get involved, you get involved. You know what? It's us guys who did it legally that mm -hmm. will get locked up. But here's the thing. So if you lift the ban, well, obviously, if you lift the ban, it stops the illegal, uh, illegal sales. So that's what we're trying to do right now. But speaking about illegal, this is actually a good segue into what we wanted to talk about as well, is yep. the illegal, uh, the illicit trade that's happening. Now, for those of you who don't know, I spoke to a police officer not too long ago. He's kind of a source for me, so I will not disclose his name. But he made a very good, uh, or we got into the conversation of cigarettes. Now, he did tell me, and this is something that Herman and I discussed before, uh, Herman kind of warned, I, I can't remember if it was off air or on air, but you warned that uh, if we're not careful, we're going to see a new type of cartel emerging, which is the tobacco cartel. Now, that might sound funny, and some of you may make fun of that in the comments, but in all seriousness, when I spoke to the police officer to confirm this, he said, yes, it is happening in the... Uh, really rural places like Mitchell's Plain, Athlone, and even and other areas, there are ga there's gang violence happening right now. People are dying, no joke. People are dying. The media is not covering it because of this tobacco ban. Tobacco yeah. has become the new heroin. Uh, and I, Herman, you wanted to comment on that. Yeah, I just want to quickly answer Hank Klopper's uh, uh, yeah. Yes, BAT is still manufacturing cigarettes for export. All right, but that's for only for export purposes to Mozambique, Botswana, and Namibia. Um, but how much I don't know. I have no idea. That's the the prerogative and their business. But as far as I know, all right, guys. To get to the whole thing around the um, cartel forming, the mafia forming that's happening in, as you said, just uh, in Mitchell's Plain, Kailicha, and it's happening in Soweto. Let's go back to the prohibition era all right when our wise united states of america uncle sam decided now we're going to ban alcohol good grief where did that end up it was a great time <laughs> it led to guys like Buxy seagull yep forming the first mafia family ah interesting and Although it took Bugsy Seagull 10 years and or two years after Prohibition to form the Mafia family, it already, the, the um, Prohibition Act already gave the Mafia a strong enough hold. Mm -hmm. And up until the, let's say, late 90s, the Mafia control over um, Las Vegas was a big problem. <laughs> a lot of people don't know it. Uh, up until, yeah, it was up until the late 90s that B Las Vegas was controlled by, by the Mafia. Um, the families and let's go back to what is smuggling all right bootlegging alcohol smuggling Al Capone all these names we know them all right but there's one name people don't revere in the smuggling industry the father who wrote the Bible on smuggling and guys I'm holding up this book here Pablo Emilio Escobar the father of modern day smuggling. Is his middle name Emilio? I'm going to change my I name think now. It's, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> Robert, no, sorry, it's not, yeah. Uh, it's Pablo uh, Emilio Escobar, um, if I'm correct. I'm and, my, wrong. and my business was called car Comedy Cartel. I mean. <laughs> yeah. I think you're family of him. I, want, I just want a few, I just want a few uh, millions, okay? I'll see what um, I can do, Herman. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's, it was Pablo Emilio Escobar, but if I'm wrong about this middle name, uh, uh, yeah, Pablo Escobar Gaviria, but most, le, very few people know his middle name, but let's keep with Pablo. If I'm wrong, God, about the middle name, please kill me. I've got the book here. <laughs> I've, I've, I read this book. Anyways, let's get back to business. 
What Pablo did was he was running contra- contraband in, in into Colombia from um, the other countries. But one thing he did is he knew every police officer who's the high ranking police officer. He knew <clears throat> um, whoever was in control and he would literally bribe them. All right. He would at a stage send these um, uh, cronies in uh, and they will literally walk in with a briefcase and put the briefcase of money on top of the commanding officer's table. And he had two choices. Take it and live. Leave it. And you die and your family is wiped out. Now, not just Escobar, the Cali cartel and other cartels did that as well. But what this guy did is he ushered in a new era of um, <clears throat> of smuggling. The way people think of smuggling. Guys, please go read the book Escobar: Drugs, Guns, Money, and Power. Um, it is a it's it's written by Pablo Escobar's own brother. All right. So <laughs> now we know Joe. Yeah, no, I saw. <laughs> uh, we just want some money, okay? Um, anyways, and the way he approached the rural settlements in Colombia, the poor areas, giving money, pumping money into those areas. And that is what's going to um, happen in South Africa. As the money starts becoming more and more in the cartels and in the smuggling, they cannot take all the money out of South Africa. They have to spend it somewhere. And by spending too much, they're going to draw too much attention to themselves. So eventually it will happen to keep people quiet. They'll start paying off. Mm. All right. Now, over the news, let's look what happened uh, in the news the past uh, few months. You'll see small busts. All right. The cops bragging on, on the media and Twitter. Oh, they busted a car full of cigarettes. Guys, that's the oldest trick that the smugglers used. They will send out a pigeon. Mm. And this pigeon will be loaded uh, small planes. All right, this guy, Escobar, freaking used DC-13s. He used uh, uh, cargo planes carrying 30 tons of cocaine into America. Uh, He used C-130s. We always, people think of these small little aircraft flying over the Bahamas into uh, Miami uh, carrying 30 kilos of cocaine. Those were pigeons, right? And they will send out pigeons to see what's happening. While the DEA were conducting a bust in a harbor and seizing two, three million dollars worth of cocaine, (laughs) the big shipment came in in a container Mm. behind them. Yeah. All right. This guy used submarines, right, to get cocaine into America. So what the smugglers will do is they'll send a, a car ahead into a roadblock. This guy will get busted. While they are writing up the paperwork, instead of continue to search the trucks and containers and tankers, because petrol tankers are being used in South Africa to bring in illegal cigarettes, they are so fixated on what's going on in front of them. Petrol tankers? Did you just say petrol petrol tankers? tankers. Yes, petrol tankers packed with cigarettes. Um, So these guys will be so focused on this that the mother load is going past them. The loss of 200,000 rand of cigarettes is not much for them because they're bringing in 40 million rand worth of cigarettes. Well, um, That's small cash. For those of you that want to know more about uh, Pablo Escobar, read the book and also watch Narcos on Netflix. I think it's Mm. based on the book. Um, It's very well done. Um, And then uh, Hank said something interesting here after you answered him. He said, so uh, BAT... Uh, they produce, then they export to Mozambique, yeah. which means they smuggle back into SA. We buy legal cigarettes under illegal trade, including transport costs. Is that how it's? Is that? Do you think? They, look, uh, bit what of a conspiracy stops any person? Yeah, there's nothing stopping a person going to Mozambique, uh, buying cigarettes, and have it smuggled across known brands like mm. uh, Rothmans or. 
Kent or something that stop doesn't stop them because buying cigarettes is legal in that country. Mm. The problem is bringing them back over the border. Mm. Uh, making money off BA- of that. And I've heard people saying that BAT is involved in smuggling guys. Um, don't go down that route. All right. Um, that is that's that's wrong. All right. Yeah. It's never been proven that these guys been saying that, but it's never been proven. Uh, what is happening is because the request for proper South African manufactured cigarettes is now reaching a plateau where people are willing to pay that money. Gangs, mafias, cartels are using this opportunity to bring in these cigarettes from mm-hmm. Mozambique. Not as much Botswana and, 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 and Namibia because it's too difficult for them. But over the Mozambican border, it's easy. Mm-hmm. right? So they will use this. And this is now blemishing uh, and um, the name of, uh, of our buyer. All right. And people must understand this. It's not... And people say, oh, yeah, because this is, no, it's not. Mm. There's cartels running uh, these operations that nobody knows where they are. The problem is that, um, no, that, Hink, that's not what I said. I said people must understand the, the whole idea of the chain. What will happen eventually is that these cartels are going to become stronger than your corporate companies. All right. And once these cartels become stronger, they will eventually start telling the corporate companies what to do. Mm. And exactly what happened in Colombia, Argentina, what happened in Chile, what happens is still happening in Mexico, um, what is happening in Brazil. Right. And, yeah, Barry Seal. Yeah, (laughs) sorry, I just called on on, on the comments on Barry Seal. That's quite an interesting story about that guy. Um, And the problem is our intelligence services will get involved, Mm. all right? Because it was proven by, I think if you read read the President's Keepers, um, you will, the people will start seeing how the intelligence services were involved in a lot of these things. Mm. And unfortunately, where money is involved, people will buy. And that's why we need this ban to um, – we need to uh, get this ban lifted so that we can get the legal trade back in. And guys, let's – so that we can get that money, the syntax, back into the coffers of the country. If we just look at the simplicity, the government just borrowed 70 billion rand from the IMF. And then SAA seems to have risen and been like, oh, we got 10 billion Mm. (laughs) for SAA right after that. Okay. How much is South Africa losing per month in the tobacco industry? Um, I think the, my source told me like 32 billion. That was his figure. Per month, it's, per month, it's 3.5 billion Mm. per month. Now, if you take the syntax that, from the alcohol industry, the wine industry, and the cigarette industry. Our government could have had that 70 billion by now. Mm. They didn't, have, didn't need to go and borrow the money, which will put debt on your children, on your grandchildren, will still be paying the 70 billion mm. that was borrowed. To mm. do. Right. But I think the question here is like also if they're willing to forgo that amount how much then are they really making uh off of this band then because i don't like it's hard for me to believe that anc is going to sit there and be like well we don't really need that amount of money we'll just borrow the money i'm like they're greedy so they're they're making money off of this somehow and i'm 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 really curious to know if they're willing to forgo 30 odd billion or whatever it is or three billion a, a month they must be making double if not more than that through through their dealings, if I can put it that way. Pro- probably. I see as a question, um, Chairman Heisman asking where does the tobacco come from? Look, guys, South Africa, all the tobacco that's produced in South Africa is produced under contract, all right? Be it the air-cured industry or the flu-cured industry, which I am in. Most of the tobacco that you see in your cigarettes uh, today – um, comes from Zimbabwe, comes from uh, countries like Malawi or Zambia. All right. Um, 
and that for that reason is because they are uh, legal buyers in Zimbabwe. There's no questions asked, all right? And because the, the Tobacco Control Act in those countries are not as strict as it is in South Africa, so any person who has a setup, a company can buy there and import that tobacco into South Africa. You can import tobacco from Zim. There's no problem with that. As long as you've got the license and as long as you've got the paying the, the bonds on your import, that's not a problem. All right. So I wanted to ask, uh, or there has been a question here, which I think is important. I mean, uh, Hank saying, what do we do? And again, this is the reason why you are here on this channel. You wanted to speak out a little bit about yeah. uh, what is going on, the dire situation yeah. that the farmers are in. Mm. And um, I think this is a good segue as well into your petition mm. or the petition, not, maybe not your petition, but I mean the yep. petition of the cigarette ban. So again, yeah. that the, the petition, I've left a link to the Twitter page of that petition yes. and to the link of the mm. petition itself in the description below. If you can't see it, just refresh the page and you will, it will pop up. But yeah. Herman, very quickly, we have about 10 minutes uh, yeah. to tell us about um, it. Then I'm off, guys, sorry, I've got a few minutes left and then I'm off to prepare for my stream of Jeremy and Ruth. So yes, and a good luck with me for me to that one. <laughs> guys, what I want you to do, all 67, uh, 76, <laughs> That's my Afrikaans. <laughs> All 76 listeners here tonight. And for those who will watch this live stream later on, please go make a proper video on your phone, post it, and say that you are supporting Lift the Ban SA. And you are in support of the ban being lifted in uh, uh, the tobacco ban being lifted in South Africa. And guys, not just the tobacco. Please do it for the wine industry as well. Because okay. as much as I'm affected, I've got friends in the, in the wine industry that are just as much struggling. All right. This is, as I said, it's not just the, about me tonight as a tobacco farmer. It's also about the wine industry. So one thing to get our message out there is, guys, get on your phones. Make a video. Post it onto Twitter. Post it onto Instagram. Use the link below. Lift the ban SA. And... Please, for each video that is shared in South Africa, if we can get 10,000 people each making a video saying how this is affecting you, please lift the ban, help the farmers, help the wine industry. 10,000 videos being shared in one week. Guys, we will make the difference. Hmm. Hashtag lift the ban sa you can go on to twitter at lift the ban sa share that with them share that with yusuf abramji which is an amazing journalist one of the yes. last and I, I would love to uh, comment him and in my eyes the last proper journalist in south africa i have immense respect for that guy i will so guys yeah i will i will make a, a little promo video out of this uh, channel um sorry out of this video which i will send in on my twitter and social media and i will right after this uh, interview i will make that video right away um they're asking should we also hashtag save our jobs yeah let's save our jobs okay so for your promo video quick one if we all go out and make a video that say sorry now now see now i'm under pressure <laughs> relax relax what's, what's yeah. the question um, if we all go out and make a video each person in South Africa and if we can get 10,000 South Africans to each make a video for lift the ban SA and save our jobs but not just the ban on tobacco but the ban on alcohol how it's affecting you and how you can contribute to lifting the ban. Guys, if we can get 10,000 people sharing their videos within a week throughout the world on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, Telegram, TikTok, go jump on it, guys, please, I'm begging you. Then, at a certain point, government will not be able to ignore us anymore. So, guys, if you're out there, please make that video, hashtag lift the ban SA, 
hashtag and also for the wine industry and hashtag save our jobs and let's get that 10,000 videos up in this week and let's get the views Fantastic. so that the government cannot ignore us anymore well let's start that movement buddy it i think it's uh it goes without saying that you know i think you've definitely proved a point with this video that there's a lot more people that are being affected than we realize it trickles down not just to the farmer but also in society in our communities the level of crime that has increased the frustrations that people are feeling and let's not forget that we also uh, even though we didn't touch on it it's a very real reality that people are being affected mentally because they don't have their cigarettes or they don't have their alcohol. And yes, I know alcohol is a bit of a double-edged sword with that, but um, cigarettes especially, they, you yes. know, there are people that rely on their cigarettes to, to de-stress, and uh, that is causing a lot of problems as well. I did see a comment in the comment section saying that they did quit. Um, good, if you quit, like, that's, there's a lot of the, the argument of, of, oh, but I quit. Good. If you quit, good. We're not saying that like we want you now to continue smoking. If you quit, awesome. Good. But what's nice is that even though those people say that, oh, I quit, they still understand that it's unfair for others to suffer. Um, and it's not easy. Everybody knows. I know. I, I used to be a, a tobacco smoker. It's, it's not easy to, to quit smoking. And, and, and I think something else, it's also affecting the vapors. You know, the vapors can't, uh, people who have uh, gone from uh, smoking tobacco to now vaping, uh, where they just get the nicotine fix, that's also banned. And there are people now that are like, well, I can't get my vape, so now I'm going to buy illegal cigarettes, and now they've gone back to smoking. Yeah. And it's, 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 it's caused so many problems yeah. we don't, uh, a lot of us don't even realize. Um, so yeah. please, guys, share this. What you can do now Share, share this video on every Facebook group that you know, on every page that you know, uh, with your friends, your family, tell them to, yes, it's an hour, but watch the whole damn thing. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, I'm, like I said, look out for the stuff in the description below. You'll see links yeah. to my social media. I'm going to be promoting this as much as I can. So when you see it, uh, you can share it. All that's going out tomorrow as soon as I get done editing. Uh, but yeah, Herman, is there anything, I, I, I know we got three minutes left, is there anything you want to say? Joe, I think we've covered it, and I would love to say tonight, thank you to every South African who's out there that has been for the past months on Twitter, Facebook, and, and they're s sending some messages of support, guys who've contacted me, trying to make plans to help me. I am astounded, I'm and I'm very appreciative of, of this, that people are in South Africa. It just showed me that we can still work together. South Africa isn't in the dumps. That's bullshit. If somebody tells us we're in the dumps, then I'm going to ask them. But I've seen so many people that wanted to support me and help me to get out of this time. They are willing, people are willing to help. Thank you to everybody in South Africa for whatever you did from signing a petition to going to help us make this video to get this uh, and sharing your own videos and personal videos thank you and joe then a special thank you to you for hosting me on your channel uh you've been very supportive um over the past few weeks um and then also my support for you in your challenge with the cancel culture thank you. as i said to you this afternoon on the telephone we are actually in the same boat mm -hmm. and we can stand together in South Africa, yes. be it a comedian, be it a farmer. Uh, if we take hands, we will make South Africa better. I couldn't agree more, Thanks. Herman. And on that, we'll leave it at that because it is pretty much almost time for you to go. So once again, yeah. thank you guys so much for tuning in. Remember, share, 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 like, like, like. And uh, I will be uh, doing another stream at 9 p.m. with a Marxist, a communist, and uh, someone who doesn't like the uh, Texas Cowboys. Uh, the football team so we'll be talking about that at 9 p.m. if you care to join me but other than that please do exactly what Herman said help the farmers of South Africa hashtag lift the ban hashtag save our jobs uh, until until then until next time I see you stay safe be kind to one another and I'll see you at the next one
Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and a share. That's how my content gets out there. Also, don't be afraid to comment. I usually do uh, respond to the comments in the comment section below. If you want to support my channel, please go to the link in the description below, support my channel, and you'll be taken to my website, which has all the details. Also, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Also, feel free to check out the links below to my social media accounts. Give me a follow, and uh, I'll see you at the next one.